Ah. So, hello there, I'm Tim, and this is How to Murder Feet uh, Southwest Coast Pass thing. Uh, this is week seven. I'm in Tor Cross. There it is. That's the uh, bus shelter I was hiding in last time, and the tank thing. Tank statue, and the big lagoon thing, and the uh, causeway. It is, um, oh, I can't tell, hang on, uh, yeah, there we go. It's uh, Sunday the 9th of May. Let me just drag the top of the screen down, carry on recording, yeah, good. Sunday the 9th of May is around two o'clock, two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I've spent a hell of a day traveling down. Um, I'll tell you all about it as we go, to be honest, but uh, it's, ah, uh, uh, yeah, light, light drizzle, I'd call it. Uh, and uh, quite a fresh wind, so I need to uh, crack on before I freeze to death. But uh, yes, today the plan, well, this, this week is tour to uh, Seaton, which is on the south coast of Dorset, I think, across the X and the Dart and some other river, and um, yeah, I probably ought to crack on, really. Uh, I've I don't think I've forgotten how to do the intros for these things. Once I find somewhere a bit more sheltered and uh, a bit less car parky, I'll probably sit down and tell you some more all about it, get the maps out, all that thing. You, you guys know the drill by now. This is the seventh go at this. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go that way. Speak to you soon. Felt as if I have it the right way up. Good. Yeah, rain stopped now. So, uh, let's, let's do a bit while we can. I think that's going to be the pattern for this week, really, on, on and off, stops and starts. So this is a Sunday start, uh, as opposed to my traditional Saturday start, because uh, yesterday I had 50 mile an hour winds and very heavy rain in these here parts. And I thought, hell, this is my holiday, my rules, I'm going to push it all forward today. So I started on Sunday. This is going to be a short week, though, in theory. Um, because it's only 79 miles. The old uh, Southwest Coast Path itinerary website thing says six days. I shall probably do it in five, given my pace. Um, so yeah, I've got time in hand, so I can avoid. I thought, well, blood blow me if I don't want to just adjust it a bit to avoid some real unpleasantness. So this is Slapton Ley, L-E-Y. It's like a sort of naturally formed inland lagoon. A big storm came up here and threw up this massive sand causeway one year, like a thousand years ago or something. There's a big visitor centre board over there. I read some of it. Um, and then, yes, up here, you can just see, they, th they threw a road along the top of the, uh, the causeway, giving themselves all sorts of maintenance headaches, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, over there is the beach. I'll get across it without getting, uh, without getting run over. Go, 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 go. Here we go. Let's go and have a look. The path's actually over there, the coast path. But I thought you'd like to see the sea, because I do. This is one of the big draws of this whole endeavour for me, is the constant sea views pretty much the entire way around. So that over there is Start Point. I don't know if you can see the lighthouse. It's a kind of grey object against a grey background. What have we got there? Oh yeah, look, there it is. Ten times zoom. So we did did all that last time. Uh, and now we're going this way to uh, Street. Uh, E-T-E, not E-E-T. Uh, and down that way is somewhere called Street Gate. And then there's a lot of cliffs and up and down and all the rest of it. And then I think over there, it's probably as far as I'm going to get today, which is going to be Dartmouth, where there is a ferry. Now I've done the research this week. Uh, you'll be pleased to know. It was all a bit slapdash last time, but, you know, in my defence there was like six rivers, only five of which had ferries, and I didn't really... Yeah, anyway, enough about that. That's all in the past. I lived. Uh, yeah, over there is Dartmouth, a little inland a bit, uh, and I checked the ferry there runs to about 10.30 at night. Now, I'm probably not going to keep walking after dark, because I tried that once, and that didn't really work that well. So, probably, I think, somewhere on that far headland, if I can get across... Might be somewhere I can throw down the tent up there. I'm going to try wild camping again all week, as, as I've uh, come to do. Partly because um, COVID, and I just don't really want to go near people if I can avoid it. Uh, and partly as a matter of personal pride, I suppose, now at this point. Uh, yeah, so, trudging on that way. It's nice, nice, nice causeway, nice view though. Nice, nice view for drive as well. 
uh, yeah, so I'm going to crack on a bit, just talk more to you about, I'll get the map out when I next sit down for a bit of a breather, but I need to get some miles in for the moment, because it's a bit of a late start, and I, st I still want to get about, I could potentially get about 12 miles in today, if I push a bit, possibly I won't make it all the way to Dartmouth, maybe I'll have to camp somewhere nearer, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how we go, alright, talk to you soon. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, the uh, early, easy two miles of that long causeway are now out of the way and I'm climbing again. And the rain's picked up a bit. <sighs> it's not a problem in and of itself, but it does make me... Well, when I'm wearing the waterproofs and the anorak and stuff, it does... Uh, I get hot. It slows me down a bit. Uh, still better that than too cold. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is thought to be the remains of a forward-firing aircraft rocket adapted to be fired from a beach landing craft during Exercise Tiger in 1944 when Slapton Beach was used to practice for the Normandy landings. It is one of many bits of ordnance found, not all of which had exploded during the construction of the 2015 of this new section of the southwest coast path between here and Street. Lovely! See if I didn't have enough problems on this trip, it's this day. It's been a real nightmare getting here, to be honest. Uh, so yeah. So there was Covid, of course, and if I stir it that way, then you don't get raindrops in the lens. So there was Covid, which hasn't gone away. Um, we're in a kind of uh, remission-y type phase, lifting lockdown and stuff at the moment, but it's still there. I'll talk more about that later, I'm sure, but uh, yeah. Then Great Western Railway discovered that their Hitachi 800 series of high-speed trains have cracks in their chassis, and so they uh, prudently took them all out of circulation yesterday. And of course, which, what sort of train would I be using to get here from my, where I live? Yes. So I had to pick an alternative route using Southwest trains, who don't have fast trains at all, don't have high-speed trains. It was like getting a train, tra long-distance train journey in the 80s, you know, lots of constant small, small changes at various stations I'd never heard of two replacement buses, two different trains, and even then my, uh, my good friend Guy, who you might have seen on the last video, the last week's ones, he uh, offered to give me a lift the rest of the way from, the, from Exeter, which was very, very kind of him and quite out of his way. So thank you there, I'm indebted. Ah, so yeah, I mean, and then there was the storm yesterday, which pushed me back to today. I mean, a superstitious man might think this trip was cursed, but uh, I'm not one of those. But now I've got to uh, go and play with unexploded ordnance. Fine. <laughs> All right, there, there. Yeah, so an easy two miles start now. I'm sort of getting back into the swing of it now, the zen of it all, as well as the headspace, as well as the physicality of it all. Uh, and now it's all going up and down cliffs and rugged coastline again. More traditional coast path fare up ahead, which is fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and get to Dartmouth, I think, probably today, and if I can get that ferry then I can, then I'll just look for any hedge thereafter. That'll be, that'll be a good day, that would be, if I don't make it quite that far, because it's getting on. What time is it now? What have I done? I've, ah, selfie mode, no one wants that. There. So I drag the top of the screen down. Oh, it's the side. Oh, are you looking at this in the wrong format now? Oh dear. I keep doing that. Um, yes, it's about... 15.55, that's 16, that's 4 o'clock, yes. So it's about 4 o'clock now, I've got potential, well, I don't know what with this haze and overcast and stuff, but I reckon I've got another four hours of daylight, probably. So, uh, four hours, that'll do me about eight miles. I could get to Dartmouth, probably just the other side, maybe, before it gets too dark to carry on. Assuming this, this these hills don't completely knacker me out. Uh, yeah. Trying to keep my gaze averted from that beach down there because apparently that's a naturalist, naturalist speech where you can be nude if you want. But I don't think anyone's really going for that today. Those people look like they're clothed. Either that or they have peculiar textured and coloured skin. Either way. Oh, a small hinge. Things you see. Precursor for mermaid, merman invasion, I expect. Anyway, camera's starting to get a little bit splattered, so I'm going to wipe it off and put it away and carry on. So, speak with you soon. I don't know if that makes a difference. I think it causes problems for post-processing. <sighs> oh, I'd forgotten how much fun contours can be for a serious hill of the day. I'm now basically up on top of that cliff you could see to the north from the beach down there. You can just sort of see it through the gap. Tall cross and 
what not there. Yeah, God. I think the path basically carries on alongside the old uh, beach road now, far away. Village of Street. I don't know if you can see that washed out contrast. Street. See? E T E. We've all been spelling it wrong. Ooh. Yeah, it's not so much the breathing or the heart rate or the legs, it's more the heat. It's where his anorak really does. It's, it's a very warm anorak. I use it as a sort of extra blanket at night when I'm sort of camping normally sometimes, but uh, wearing it as you're climbing a hill, hard going. Oh, but it's good to be out again, enjoying this already. Even the hardship. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I suppose I ought to get the map out and show you some stuff. It's right in the back of there. Stretchy cover. Gives it a bit of waterproofing. Got the hat, too windy for the hat. Not very windy at the moment though. Too hot for the hat. Whatever, one, one, one thing or another. Uh, right, so maps. Yes, it's the map bit. Give you some, con some context for what's going on. I'll keep it all waterproofed as well. So, here we are. Focus. So, uh, yeah, we are basically here ish. Slapton Street, Stoke Fleming, Brixham, etc. That's Dartmouth there, Little River. I'll try and get the other side of that river today if I can. And then onwards and north. On the wider scope, we are starting down near Paynton. You can see the Dartmouth bit there, little, little river. So we're going round past Torquay, Dawlish, Tainmouth, etc. There's Exmouth, across the River X, and there's Seaton, where I tend to finish this week. So yeah, relatively straight, nice curve around the coast. The wind will be behind my back all the way because it actually changes to point more, more towards the northeast later in the week. So I basically have the wind behind me the entire way. Good and bad, it means I don't cool down as easily, but it doesn't mean I get a bit of, I don't have to be struggling into gales and such. Yeah, four maps this time. Ridiculous, the other three are all buried in the middle of the bag there to keep dry. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully a short early leg. I mean, to be honest, according to the, uh, according to the guide, guide website, um, there's only one one little stage that's 15 miles, the others are all like 10s and 11s, so that's for the six day plan. I tend to have this pace that puts me a day ahead over that kind of span, so I'd expect five days, but we'll see. Oh, so we've got the um, got three rivers to deal with. Oh, I can't be bothered to unfold this in the, in the, in the wind and the wet. But it has kind of calmed down a bit at the moment, This is nice. But yes, three rivers, so the Dartmouth has a ferry, quite regular, runs until uh, about 10.30 at night apparently. So yeah, so if I get there today, there should be something I can jump on board. And then I'll look for something on the far side. So that's that's one. Then there's the Tain at Tainmouth, Tainmouth, spotting the naming convention here. Uh, that one has a small ferry that runs most of the day. I've got the times on a document on my phone somewhere, which I can't get out of the because I'm talking to you through it. Uh, so that goes all day more or less. Uh, and even if I miss that one, there's a road bridge about a quarter of a mile north. <laughs> Great big long A2 something, something, something. Main road through the area with a footpath along the side. I checked on Google Maps, Street View. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem. If I miss that ferry, I could just walk across the bridge. Uh, and then the big one, the big, the River X, there's, uh, there's no real convenient bridges for that one. If I miss that ferry, there's essentially a 20 mile detour inland to Exeter where uh, the nearest bridge is, uh, but Star Cross and, uh, and Star Cross, the uh, Star Cross Ferry, the place the ferry goes from actually has a train station and so does Exmouth. So if I miss that ferry, I'm just going to get the train to Exeter and back again. It'll take about an hour <laughs> and I can carry on on the other side, which I don't regard as cheating. Any reason I didn't do something similar on the previous week was because there were no public transport connections to any of that nonsense. 
But yes, and those are the only three rivers this week, and I don't think there's any major rivers in the week after that. So I think if I can get across the X to Exmouth, I'm pretty much done with boats and bridges and wading across rapids until the very end of the whole thing. So that's good. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a bit up and down. You see, it's coat on, coat off, coat on, coat off for this. I think I'll go coat off a bit for a while because I'm overheating somewhat already. But um, yeah, it's a big stretchy cover there. That can stay on. That doesn't seem to make much difference one way or the other. It just looks a bit garish. But yeah, good, good. I think the hair's not helping either. As you can tell, I've not been into the office since we spoke last, or indeed since the beginning of COVID. This is my lockdown look, which I think I'm rocking quite well. <sighs> oh, it's great not having to actually see people anymore. You can look how you like. But yeah. So yeah, I've got my hat in case it gets sunny. I don't think it's going to get much more sunny than this, to be honest, over <laughs> the whole week. I've been very lucky with the weather, this whole endeavour so far. So, I mean, I was always going to get one week out of the eight at least that was going to be just awful with rain. So if this is the worst it gets all week, I think it's a bit heavier on Tuesday. I might have to trudge on through the, uh, the murk on Tuesday by the looks of things, but even that might blow off. Might not be as bad as advertised. So we'll see. Yeah. I think if I was going to have a bad bad weather week, this is the one to do it because it's quite short and there's going to be a lot of flat bits ahead when we get to like places like Torquay where there's just going to be large large promenades and uh, sea frontage. It means there's lots of shops, it means it's relatively flat, it means that uh, transport and conveniences are generally widely available, but on the other hand it makes wild camping a bit trickier, <laughs> just setting up under the pier or whatever. I don't know, we'll have to see. I usually find something. I get less worried about this kind of thing. I mean, it, perhaps that's complacency, but I've done six of these before, so <laughs> I kind of know what I'm doing, mostly by process of elimination. Right, ah, cooling breeze picked up a bit there. Now we're on the tops, that's good. Hopefully we stay up here, although we came along this road to, uh, when I got dropped off and it, it did go up and down, up and down that way. So I got a feeling there's a few more down than ups, but nowhere near as bad as the north coast of Cornwall and Devon. So yeah, just trudge on, I think. Crack on, while the day lasts. More later. <sighs> That's a bit of a hillside here. Let's see where I came from. There, there, start. Well, that's not the start. That's the start, start point. Uh, that's Torcross, where I began earlier today. You get the idea. Good wind sculpted tree here. Bit of an indication not to camp in this field, <laughs> along with the uh, animal droppings. And there we go, so that's ahead. So that thing on the top there is a day mark. Not like a sort of navigation thing for being out at sea in the olden days. That day mark is on top of a hill which is the other side of the Dart, the other side of Dartmouth Crossing. So I can, yeah. So these two headlands, and then we'll see what we see. It does look a bit down and up. I think we'll go down to that beach next. Brooding skies. Well, they're not just brewing, they're occasionally sobbing at me as well. Still, there you go. I'm paying it no mind. You shouldn't encourage it, see? It's just a cry for help. Hello. Curious. Yes? I'm all right for Mint Imperials, thank you. Yeah, you stay outside of that fence. Hmm. Oh, welcome back, Coast Path. It's like I never left. Is that it over there? Bloody hell. Yep. Are those sheep for scale? Or ants? No, they are sheep. Uh, right, let's get on with it then. Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Oh. Like coming down there, of course he started coming down as I was starting my climb, of course. Just so I got an audience, you know. Oh. But yes. I had to stop and 
gasp for breath once during that ascent. I mean, I've just finished the couch to 5k again, you know, my regular pilgrimage. So I'm relatively fit at the moment, although quite heavy at the moment as well. My, my dieting wasn't as effective during this last lockdown as it might have been. And then whose was? Christmas, always a difficult time for not stuffing your face full of food. <sighs> yeah, still shagged out at the top again, but uh, you know, I think my recovery time's improving, that's the thing. <sighs> stop and let the old heart rate drop back below uh, critical thresholds again and then carry on up, but yeah, only had to stop once. <sighs> yeah, I seem to be getting back to normal quicker, which I think is, I suppose, the real benefit of the Couch to 5k thing. I mean, yeah, fine, I can theoretically run five kilometres without stopping, but that rarely comes up in modern life. <sighs> it's more that uh, you're less completely poleaxed at the end of it all, and for less time. <sighs> Good, so, along this field here, which is nice because it means we have to walk along this, uh, this road, <laughs> which is, uh, I won't call it uh, double track it's sort of a car and a half wide <laughs> so yeah definitely no room to be lurching around hikers trying not to scrape themselves off in the hedge oh, good right let's keep moving not so static caravan that's the way to do it in style block the whole road up as well <laughs> And there's dinky little camper van sleep above the driver's bit for them. <laughs> oh, great. Simple things. So that's Blackpool Sands down there. Which is odd because I thought there was a lot more, lot more illuminations and, and amusement arcades and things. Might be more than one Blackpool. I'll have to check. So I'll have to go down to there and then back up the other side, presumably. That's the life of a southwest coast partha. Path East, I don't know, whatever. Southwest pedestrian. That's a picturesque view there. Must be lovely in summer. <laughs> I wonder if there's a cafe open down there. I'm seeing a lot of boat hire type stuff, which is pretty optimistic today, but uh, maybe there's some coffee to be had. If not, I shan't worry too much. Carry on anyway. Oh, lovely. Just come down that. I don't have to go up it until I do the return leg, obviously. Oh. Wild garlic, I think. You can sort of catch a fair whiff of it. Or could be me. <laughs> um, bluebells in amongst it all. I think everything's a bit late this year because we've had a really cold autumn. Um, oh, autumn. Really cold April. It's like minus frosts and all that sort of thing. Oh, the leaves are still developing. Not really fully fully formed yet on a lot of these branches. I don't know if you can see that at all. Take my word for it. Yeah, a lot of the leaves are still unfurling. It's not quite full summer verdure. I mean, this time last year when I was hiking about, it was all fully fully greened up. So yeah, I think it's, everything's been put back a bit this year around. Actually, this time last year I didn't hike at all, did I? That was the lockdown, yeah, two years ago. Anyway, there's, there's less leaf than I'd expect for this time of year. What with me, me and all my nature knowledge and stuff. Oh, right, there it is, coast path down to the beach. Let's see if that hut's open. I mean, it's getting on to be about five or, yeah, gone past five on a Sunday, so quite unlikely to find many things open at this time of the week. I don't mind, I don't need coffee, I've got two full full cans of water, I haven't used any water, I haven't drunk anything since I set off. Although I did completely neck a uh, half litre bottle of Lucasade before I set out on the way down, so that's still tiding me over at the moment, I think. Just because it's not hot doesn't mean I'm not going to sweat, so yeah, the water's still important. Oh, it's a picturesque photo opportunity up ahead. Hang on, I'll carry on filming while I try and negotiate this gate thing. Oh, this is all very, all very Lilliput Lane 
You can imagine a lot of this stuff on someone's mantelpiece, collectible so it's set. I try not to do much filming whilst actually walking because it's hard to, hard to concentrate. Yeah, this is relatively new, I think. This isn't an ancient, ancient ye olde post bridge or anything. Good, I approve. I approve of coast path improvement as a rule. Let's remember to donate a huge wadge of cash to the relevant charities once I finish this whole thing. <sighs> right, to the beach. Oh, okay, that'd be a no then. Look yeah, at that thing. It used to be the path straight ahead. There's a big barred off thing here. There we go and use the road for a little bit. <laughs> Something. Probably the wind, maybe erosion on the cliff, just took that whole tree over. Tore it down. It's got to be, ooh, 150 years old, maybe. Can't see rings or anything, but a substantial sized trunk. Definitely 100. And then just gone, like that. Mind you, given the curvature of the cliff, and the cliff edge took it out first. And the whole thing just toppled. Probably wasn't wind. <sighs> Yeah, and if I've learned anything on this trip, it's to uh, pay attention and obey these kind of diversions. <laughs> they are there for a reason, not just to make life difficult, mostly. But I mean, apart from that nonsense that the Mount Edgecombe estate, which I, I, I genuinely believe was an attempt to, in, to ensnare and ensorcel me. But there you go, I made it out. Oh, right, let's see what's up here then. Whew. Yeah, not sure where I am now. Case path pointed inland and uphill, and I followed it, and it left me to die. So, it's probably an acorn around here somewhere. Yep, oh, God no. I know the wrong way up, I think. Anyway, there's a, a church, steer, steeple, spire, tower, something. Splendid. I'm going to continue trying to find out where I am. I probably need a map stop soon. Very loud, ominous birds up there. Still, I'm not worried. Look, I found, I found some acorns. All good. Oh, clang, clang, clang. That's the uh, 1744 bell. I don't know. Ah, let's have a look at the map anyway. So, let's gauge the extent of the problem. So, we started down there. Here we go. It's all across. Memorial, that's that tank statue thing, there's the long beach. Done that. And then all the way up to here, up to there, picnic spot. Yeah, the yeah, see there's that's new I think since my map. Because I'm sure I went along this cliff here and then climbed up to there somewhere. So I think there's been a section added since then. Anyway, so then we went through street. Followed all this across, down that big long thing and back up, round here, down the hill to Blackpool Beach, Blackpool Sands, whichever. And then I've been diverted up this yellow one, which panicked me a bit. And there's the there's the old uh, spire there. Square, because it's a tower, not a steeple. It's the round one, I think. And now I'm about here, somewhere. Which is good, so yes, actually I was all right up there. For some reason it doesn't go anywhere near the coast for quite a long stretch. Only this is not coast path. Coast path actually goes on here and then along this one here. And then we're going back down onto the cliffs and stuff and round. And then to Dartmouth, which is all of this. I think that's my ferry up here somewhere. Dartmouth Castle. Go past that. That's the end of day one. Somewhere in here really. Um, I don't know, I reckon somewhere along here I could probably throw the tent down, but we'll see. There's a couple of campsites here, but I think this is just too soon really, too early. It's only, it's not even six o'clock yet, I've got potentially two more hours. We'll certainly get around here to the ferry in two hours, maybe across and on a bit. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, the rest of the other campsite's far too far away. There's one right over there, but I'll never get there today. So yeah. Good, good, good. 
So looking at today's progress, I'd say, oh, we're well over halfway. I think we're probably about two thirds to three quarters of the expected mileage for today. And I've still got two hours to go. So yeah, I think I can certainly get across to the other side now and then just look for something on yonder, uh, yonder path, usual sort of thing. Any old bit of flat ground with a tree blocking some wind will do me. Good, 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 good. And now I'm going to be eaten by carrion crows. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, Stoke Fleming, that's the uh, church tower thing over there. That's one mile that way. Another mile under the belt. And Dartmouth Castle, a mile and a half that way. And I think just up ahead, I'll get around the corner and away from this exposed south facing. I mean, there's some grass all around here. This is National Trust land, and I think they tend to tend to take care of their land a bit more uh, meticulously than most. Uh, this bench there. Anyway, that's too early. I've got another hour and a half at least before it gets even starts getting dark. So one and a half miles. Yeah, I do about two miles an hour. So yeah, it's about 40 minutes there, probably another 20 minutes or so into Dartmouth, so that's another hour. And then cross the ferry if it's still running. And then I don't know what, let's just see what we can find on the far side. It's all good. I'm really not worried about it to be honest, I tend to find stuff. It just needs to be a bit carefully chosen regarding wind shadows and the like. I mean, look at that tree, that's, that's a sign if ever you need one. Don't camp here. Uh, well, that's quite like a little hollow there with a the picnic table in it. Still facing directly into the wind though, so that's no good. No, 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 we'll carry around to Dartmouth and then see what's, see what's what beyond, I think. That's probably the plan. Yeah, it's cooling down a little, I think. That's the nice thing about this sudden sort of change in wind and rain and everything that hit at the beginning of this week is suddenly the temperature rose about 10 degrees. This would be, uh, if, I'd, if I'd have tried this last week, this would have been a considerably more unpleasant experience with more layers and uh, gloves and scarves and things. Well, I mean, there is, there is a reason I do these things in May and September. Generally chosen for the ambient temperature and usually the weather's quite stable, but uh, who knows? Oh. A nice view though, apart from the mistiness of it all. Weather says there's going to be more rain coming, 80% chance of light showers in the next hour or two, so get ready for that. Right at the moment, I can't even feel any moisture in the air, so we'll keep moving though. I mean, I can always throw the anorak on again if need be. That's good. Yeah, you can see the top of that day marks in, sh in cloud. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, very low. I wonder what that's going to do to the dusk. Perhaps I've got as much daylight as I thought. Never mind, it's fine. Oh, so yeah, just uh, making my way towards Dartmouth Castle, which is less than a mile this way. Not sure where the path goes next, down there maybe. A lot of ups and downs. I understand it gets a bit easier later in the week. Once we get around Torquay and stuff. A bit of promenade stuff would do me good, I think. But, uh, no, I don't mind these hills. Okay, recovering each time, making progress. It's good. Oh. Yeah, so I was sort of aiming. Ah, oh, there, there it is. Keep pressing the wrong thing, double tapping it or something. But um, yeah, just want to get somewhere on the end of there. But uh, I don't think I'll get there today. Because there's like some old fortifications, which I thought would provide you with excellent wind shadow. But I don't know. I'm not sure I'll get that far now because it's quite a way it's quite a way inland and then back again for today and for the daylight I've got. May have to look something a bit nearer. Let's we'll see if we can get to the ferry and cross and then just look for basically the first thing I see after that. Should do the trick. And I can't stand here gassing to you all day. Oh that's exciting. <laughs> Probably don't want to camp anywhere around here. I don't even need to get close enough to read what it says. I can, I can spot sinkhole damage when I see it. 
Looks like the cliff just gone, just gone. Yeah, cliff collapse. Danger Will Robinson. Some steps and fences and things down there. Must have been something there once, but I think there's a sign back that way down to the cove, but I don't want to go down there. No, yeah, right, we'll go up and round then. Yeah, danger zone. Ah, so flagging a bit now. <laughs> Has been a long day. So I think I've probably pushing my luck trying to get across the ferry and find something on the other side because looking at the far side of the uh, estuary there, there's a, quite a long way before it goes all wilderness again. I don't think I'm going to make it that far. It's about three, two or three miles down that way. Two miles along to the end. Just can't see through these trees. <sighs> so I probably ought to look for something as soon as possible then, because if I go much further, I'm going to get into the mean streets of Dartmouth, where there probably won't be anywhere to put a tent. So, yeah, I mean, I've done most of the miles I was supposed to do today. So that's not bad, considering it's a sort of day zero travel day. And I'm sure I'll make the rest, make the short fall up through the rest of the week. But yeah, just trying to find somewhere to put down pretty much from here right now onwards, really. It's about, uh, oh, just a bit past seven. <coughs> oh, sneeze. <coughs> I don't really get hay fever this time of year normally. There's be something around here. A sudden whiff of it. Grass for me, late June, early July. Still, uh, yeah, so losing the light a bit because of the clouds and the uh, trees near the shelter. This is definitely a good good place for wind shelter. That's really still and calm here because the entire headland's blocking the prevailing wind. So just anywhere along here if I can find something. Something flat enough and discreet enough. But yeah, certainly we're okay for not being torn to bits by the wind in the middle of the night down here somewhere. So we'll see what we can find. <sighs> uh, Bench of the Dead in loving remembrance of Reginald and Doris Merrick. Wasn't that the Elephant Man? Or oh, whatever. <sighs> and taking a perfectly valid rest on this perfectly publicly accessible bench and totally uh, oblivious of that large flat green space down there. But someone's even had a bonfire on. Is that fire? Ash, charcoal, whatever. I'm not going to be nearly that destructive. So yeah, I think this might do. So if I go much further that way, I'm going to end up in bloody Dartmouth. Uh, yeah, fine, I might be able to get a ferry till quite late, but it'll be dark on the other side. And it's quite a way out up this sort of weird steep woodland by the looks of it on the other side. I think this might be my best bet. If I'm gone Monday morning, I don't know if anybody will notice or care. Let's see. Let's go down and reconnoitre the area, I think, but this could be it. This could be the spot. Not that I'm going to do anything here, of course. I'm going to go to a nearest hostelry or campsite. The trouble is, I can't even go to a B&B or a hotel if I want to as well, because of the COVID regulations, which uh, at the moment are being lifted from a quite a severe lockdown. Oh, yeah. <sighs> But at the moment only allow uh, self-contained accommodation holidays, so ironically my tent actually qualifies as that, that's fine. Uh, I'm allowed to wild camp, I'm not allowed to go to a hotel or a b, &B. But it's sensible, I agree with all Covid regulations, because it's a terrifying thing. Oh, so where were we? We were, last time we spoke, last time we went hiking together, um, it was, what, September. 2020 and everything was fine we were in a kind of weird tier three tier four some places a tier two or one type stage after having a lockdown lifted in spring so summer was sort of ticking along but then it was all starting to get a little bit out of control around september time um, and then november we had a flash lockdown um, as it was all starting to climb again the deaths and the graphs the daily figures um, that lasted one month didn't seem to be noticed or observed by many people. I think it was a bit wishy-washy. And then they lifted lockdown back to tears again for December. And then 
<laughs> because you know Covid shares a lot in common with the uh, the Axis forces during the First World War and uh, uh, yes definitely respects a Christmas truce and a quick game of football outside the trenches um, we were we were, we were totally lifted from all restrictions whatsoever for Christmas Day and possibly Boxing Day and everyone went mad that was like a super spreading Sunday or whatever day it was um, and predictably enough by about mid-February we'd seen the highest Covid death figures since the whole thing began uh, at one point I think there was like 1400 people a day dying after having received a positive Covid diagnosis yeah they couldn't directly link the cause and effect but that's the metric everyone's been using. It was terrifying. So yeah, full on lockdown, back to, you know, back to staying indoors, do not leave your homes. Um, and that's only just starting to be lifted off now in, in stages over the last sort of couple of, last April, I suppose. Schools have slowly been going back. Some pub, pubs are allowed to serve in the beer gardens, but not inside. So yeah, there's just marquees everywhere now in pub car parks. I might be able to pick up a lemonade, pint of lemonade on this trip yet. Yeah. But uh, personally, I think I'm just going to stay away from everyone if I can. Misanthropy largely, um, but also COVID. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at now. But now that the, the really super harsh lockdown through February and March seems to have worked. We're now down to, what, 20? I think 14 was the, the most recent daily deaths figure I've seen. And, of course, the jabs and the vaccines have started turning up as well now. So that was... Um, it was March, I think they started being rolled out to the super vulnerable, the care home elderly. Um, I've had mine. I'm, I've had my first jab, the AstraZeneca one. Um, I'm 45, but I have type 2 diabetes. Uh, it's well managed. It doesn't seem to have any real impact on my life because I could take the tablets and do the right things. But one of the few silver linings of type 2 diabetes is they bump you to the front of the queue for flu jabs and things like that. So... Uh, so I've had my first one. Of course, it's the AstraZeneca one, the blood clotty one, only we're not supposed to call it that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's late, so, you know, they started dole doling them out, and about a week or two after that, I, we, we learned that in some cases they can cause blood clot difficulties. But the numbers are stupid. You know, I actually sat down and listened to the numbers on the news, and it turns out it's like one in 250,000 people who take, get given the AstraZeneca jab have some kind of blood clot-related problem. And out of those, one in four actually go on to die from the blood clot. So literally one in a million chance of dying from the AstraZeneca flu jab. And I thought, oh, I don't know what my chances of dying from COVID are, but I'll take those odds. That seems fine. Yes, yeah, sign me up. Got my second one at the end of this month, 29th, and I will definitely be going and availing myself of it. My mum's already had two. I think she had the Pfizer one. So, you know, that's, that's always been the big plan, I think. We're going to jab our way to normality again. Everyone's going to, yeah, almost everyone, I suppose, going to be vaccinated and then we can get on with our lives again. We'll get COVID, it'll still be out there, but it will be no more debilitating than a common cold, I suppose, if you've had the vaccine. I guess that's the idea, anyway. Hopefully it cuts down transmission. Hopefully things get back to normal, I suppose. I'm getting a bit bored of it as well. The novelty was great to begin with, but even I'm starting to miss going to work occasionally. I'll have to get this cut, I suppose. But... But yeah, so um, that's where we're at with that. I mean, you know, not strictly relevant to hiking, but uh, I like to use this as a kind of living diary as well. Anyway, enough about me, look at the sea. So this is the mouth of the Dart estuary. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that bit of grass down there looks mighty inviting, but I've still got an hour or two before it gets proper dark. It's 7.30 now, I just don't think I can improve on my chances of finding somewhere to camp tonight if I proceed, so I think this will have to do. Like I say, I'll use a campsite if there's one there. I mean, we've passed two on the, on the way from here to, to here, but one was like two miles off of the start, the beginning of my day's hike, so that's no good. And the other one was still about five miles short of here. So There's just not enough of them where I need them, that's the thing. <laughs> still, there you go. But I suspect I should be a damn sight tidier than whoever left that. What is that? Is anyway, it looks like a looks like someone's had one of those disposable barbecues. And that's fine, they keep the coals inside, you know? They're relatively safe, but they, they get hot. So if you just put it on the grass, it's going to scorch and burn the crap out of the grass all around it. Put it at least put it on some bricks or something, if you're going to do one of those. But yeah. See, so if that were me, I'd have put the barbecue probably on the concrete wall behind, which wouldn't have suffered any significant damage from the heat. 
but then I, if it were me, I wouldn't be doing a barbecue at all. I don't bring any cooking stuff. I don't bring any stove, you know, primer stoves or little butane cylinders or anything like that. It's just too much hassle and faff, particularly for this this terrain, this this, this southwest coast path. There's always food nearby. You know, you're never more than half a day's <laughs> walk away from a pasty. So, and I just bring cold, you know, dried nuts mostly. Dried fruit and nuts in bags in the top of the rucksack for my own personal emergency rations. I don't need hot cups of tea or stuff. Well, I can, yeah, I can get hot coffee at, um, you know, those beach cafes and things. There's really no need to bring cooking utensils and camping, you know, fire on the kind of trip I'm doing. Warm enough in your bag. You go to pick the right times of the year where you don't need a campfire to keep warm. I mean, that's a real problem for ninja camping, I have to say. <laughs> if you've got a campfire, you are not ninja camping. Yeah, I think, I think I passed a dog walker just pair of dog walkers just coming from that way about five or ten minutes ago but I think that might be it for the day it's getting late it's a bit windy and cold it's Sunday night do you want to cozy up with the telly I don't know call the midwife or whatever the hell it is people watch I think that might do me fine I mean the shelter here is very good like you can hear you might be able to hear a lot of noise but that's just the sea crashing against the bottom of a cove just over there so it's going to be a bit noisy but you know that's part of the course for this kind of trip it's not, I'm not seeing much going on in the tops of the trees in terms of leaves rustling. I think the, the big solid headland here is doing a fantastic job of keeping the prevailing off of me. Well, it's not prevailing, it's quite odd actually. It's weird southwesterly. But down there looks pretty flat, flat enough to put a picnic table on, it would be flat enough for me. And probably sheltered at that end. And look, I can even, even hide behind this hedge. So I don't mind, I don't, yeah, I'm not causing any trouble, and if someone comes along and tells me to off it, I will, you know. I'm not a malcontent, it's just I didn't seem, just doesn't seem to be anybody using that flat piece of grass at the moment, that's all. But yeah, I think it's just a sort of little, little picnic area, probably to do with Dartmouth Castle, which I think is a bit further up that way. We'll probably see that tomorrow now. I'm not going to press on any further today. I'll wait for it to get a bit darker and then get set up, I think. Yeah, another day, the feet are okay. I took the... Last, so last, the last week, um, I did 100 miles in, in a week, and it was like eight days in the end, what with all the cocking about with ferries and waiting for the tide to go out so I could walk across rivers. Uh, it was quite long, and I, I, I think I, my feet were pretty numb afterwards, actually. I think I might have done some nerve damage, and it took quite a while for that to heal up. It has healed up since, although not entirely. So I wonder if I've done myself a permanent mischief with those things. But I pulled the insoles out of my boots, uh, and they were the, they were the ones that came with it, and they were basically just completely squished. There was no 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 play in them at all. They were completely compressed. So uh, yeah, I've got some new ones now, so much more aftermarket spongy ones. Should be the thing. <laughs> Too early still, clearly. I'm getting better with strangers walking past while I'm filming, but I'm still not <laughs> still not comfortable with it. I think it's rude to be filming other people without asking them anyway. And also I feel a bit of a burp talking to myself. But I'm not, I'm talking to you. They don't know that. I can talk to myself if I like. I don't know, you see so many people on buses and things just talking to themselves, apparently, anyway. Oh yeah, I know they're obviously on a phone or whatever, but I don't know why I should feel like I'm weird and odd. Anyway, yeah, so I was talking about feet. Uh, and those are, yeah, I think they're, well, they're feeling okay today. You know, I've done about 10 miles so far, no, no, no complaints, no proto blisters, no numbing or anything. But I think, yeah, I've got some really lurid, quite spongy sort of, they're about, about that thick and got quite a lot of give in them extra insoles to put in. I think I really would recommend that to anyone who's doing that. Don't just rely on whatever's in the boot when you buy it. Usually the boot, usually the, 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 the insole in the boot that comes with it will, will come out, will detach. Will, and, and you could put something else a bit, bit more robust in there, some aftermarket thing, some custom design super thing. Try that. Gives you a bit more bounce. Takes a bit of the uh, shock off, particularly when you're walking on tarmac, concrete, pavements, that sort of thing. That seems to be the worst. Walking across fields and mud and stuff, you know, or just normal mud path. That's, uh, that doesn't seem so bad. 
Oh. All right, yeah, I'm going to have a little wander down there and see what that looks like, see if I can get away with that. This <laughs> is just sore. I'm obviously not done with dog walkers just yet. That's fine. I don't think I'm fooling anyone here. I'm sat on a bench and getting dark and I've got a tent clearly on top of the back, on, on top of the rucksack. Don't think, I'm, don't think anyone cares to be honest. As I say, I've done this is my seventh week of five, six, seven night adventures in the wild, most a lot of, with a lot of wild camping gone on and I haven't had any shit from anyone so far. Nobody's you know come banging on the tent flap in the middle of the night with a torch and going, oh you can't be here. I mean, partly because I, you know, am clever enough not to pick places that do do obviously have 24-hour security surveillance. You know, as long as you're out of the way, and as long as you're tidy and respectful, and you clear up completely when you when you go. You know, I don't think anyone really minds. Not not in my experience, anyway. I imagine it'd be different for large packs of people. Though. If you were doing this with like six or seven of you all your backpacks, I think you'd have to you'd probably have to scatter and disperse as as dusk approached, try and find different places each. As if you all just set up in a big long, long line like a scout troop, you're going to probably attract a bit more shit, a bit more concern from the locals. I see a sign back there at the National Trust car park explaining how much the South West Coast Path brings in, in additional out of season tourism money, and that's true. True in my case, I'm, I'm buying pasties and drinks everywhere I go. Perhaps I'm not paying as much hotel billage as the, as the, uh, the average coast parker, but. Yeah, it's a good thing for the region. I don't think you get many ignorant idiots doing the coast path as an adventure. <laughs> you know, leaving beer cans every five metres. I'm starting to beer's quite heavy, you know, liquid-wise. <laughs> I can really feel the difference when I've got empty water bottles versus full ones on the backpack. So that's two different, two kilos between them. Anyway, I'm getting a bit chilly now. This is going to be the problem. I've got to sit around until I can actually get the tent up and get in my bag but not freeze whilst that's happening, because it's, it's when you stop moving it starts to get a bit cooler. I don't know what the actual temperature is, it's about 12 degrees, but as the sun goes down it'll get less. It'll be about 7 tonight probably, which is, you know, not what you want to be sitting around in shirt sleeves doing. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's alright when you're hiking, you're hiking, you're keeping warm, you're generating heat, you keep moving, it's all good, but yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling now, really, clearly trying to pad out and <laughs> talk until the sun goes down, which is probably unfair on you. Anyway, so... I probably won't be talking to you again tonight, then. It'll be too dark by the time I'm ready to tuck into bed. So, uh, I shall speak to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.